We've had mobile phones since 1983, and smartphones since the year 2000. But now, at the end of 2012, we're reaching a stage where we have devices that are more powerful than ever before. The top three are the Droid DNA from HTC, Google and LG's Nexus 4, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. The mistake that many people make is thinking that the former two phones are next generation phones due to their newer processor architecture. All these three phones are still under generation 3, albeit at the end of the generation. You'll understand what I mean by generations when the history of the smartphones documentary is released. Generation 4 phones begin when the first full A15 architecture phones are released. The A15 architecture is a leap forward in processing speed and efficiency, set to perform a German blitz on the current 2012 generation, which in itself is in a fierce battle. With that in mind, let's take a look at these new phones under four main categories, performance, hardware, software, and value. In this episode, I'm going to showcase the phones using extracts from around the web. Let's start with performance. A note here, I'm not just going to spit out random facts and benchmark numbers, but I'm going to present some quantifiable results to you. Both the Droid DNA and the Nexus 4 feature Snapdragon S4 Pro CPUs. They're both clocked at 1.5GHz and both use Qualcomm's Crate quad-core architecture with dual channel 533MHz memory configurations. But there's one difference. LG's processor uses thermal throttling. What this means is if the CPU thinks it's getting too hot, it'll reduce performance to cool itself down. Both processors also use 28 nanometer technology. As mentioned earlier, Crate is not yet 815 technology. It's close, but the difference is, Crate has less pipeline depth, less cache, and less MIPS per megahertz. Meanwhile, the Galaxy Note 2 features an overclocked Samsung-made Exynos 4412 quad, clocked at 1.6 gigahertz. The memory configuration is 400 megahertz dual channel, and the die process is 32 nanometers. Sorry if this is going over your head, but we just need to cover this quickly before we get to the good stuff. So let's talk a bit about the GPUs. The DNA and Nexus 4 feature Adreno 320 GPUs, while the Galaxy Note 2 features a Mali 400. As you'll see a bit later, the Adreno 320s just absolutely destroy the Mali 400 when it comes to next generation gaming and texture fill rates. All three phones are set to have 2GB of RAM, both the Droid DNA and Nexus 4 only have 1.5GB available, while the Galaxy Note has 1.75GB. It's definitely safe to say that all three phones are no slouches, no matter the outcome. Alright, so let's get starting with the testing, shall we? I'm going to use five different benchmark scores to input into my custom method for CPU comparisons. The end result will be a percentage of performance advantage of one phone against another. The reasoning behind this is to reduce sensitivity of one benchmark favoring one CPU architecture over another. If you want to see the raw scores or the full method of how I achieved the results, head over to my blog, which will be linked in the description below. Okay, so the five benchmarks I used were Antutu, Quadrant, Smartbench, Filamo, HTML5, and GL Benchmark 2.5 Offscreen 1080p. I looked through a lot of sample benchmarks, so this is the real deal. All the scores were pretty much the same wherever I went. Before I announce the results, just as a side point, the Nexus 4 came last in every single test apart from GL Benchmark 2.5, which was very surprising. So first things first, the Note 2 versus the Nexus 4. The Note 2 actually easily takes on the Nexus 4 and beats it in 4 out of the 5 tests, and it's really the HTML5 performance of the Nexus 4 that brings its score right down. It's almost half of what the Galaxy Note 2 was performing at. That being said, the Nexus 4 absolutely obliterates the Note 2 in GPU performance by more than a staggering 50%, but it's just not enough for the Nexus 4. The Note 2 still comes out on top by 29% overall. Alright, so the Note 2 versus the Droid DNA. It turns out the Droid DNA is a very well-rounded device and edges out the Galaxy Note in three of the five tests. However, HTML performance was pretty much equal with the Galaxy Note just taking it by a negligible amount. Once again, the Note 2 got pulverized in GPU performance. So as it turns out, the Droid DNA beats the Galaxy Note by an average of 34%. So when it comes to the Nexus 4 versus the Droid DNA, there's no chance for the Nexus 4. The Droid DNA pulverizes the Nexus 4 by a staggering 49% average. So to summarize, for the performance section, it goes Droid DNA, Galaxy Note 2, and then the Nexus 4. Many people out there would just leave it at that, but I'm not just an average YouTube guy, so let's make some sense of the numbers. So for next gen gaming, so like in the next two years when we get higher fill rates and higher triangle counts, the S4 Pro CPUs will come in handy, and uh, you'll want to be using one of those. 
but this all depends on the user. Are you going to be gaming on your device or are you going to do more web browsing? If you're going to be doing more web browsing, HTML5 is going to be a big thing in the future, so it's best to keep that in mind when using the Nexus 4, which had a poor performance compared to the other two phones. Although everyone knows benchmarks should be taken with a grain of salt. So the DNA has no problems with HTML5 or gaming, right? Does it? Well no, the benchmarks don't tell the full story. The DNA has a 1080p screen, meaning that it has to push almost twice the pixels for every frame drawn by the CPU and GPU, so that lovely display kind of suits the performance in the foot. Here's an excerpt from The Verge explaining. One with the DNA's significantly higher screen resolution, but there's instances where it chugs on scrolling, especially in the Chrome browser. And again from Pocket Now. Faster on the Nexus 4. Now what you're dealing with here is obviously similar hardware. Uh, so what you're going to get is the Joy DNA being a little bit slower most of the time just because it has so many more pixels than the Nexus 4. In my humble opinion, only a full A15 CPU should be pushing that many pixels. Alright, so hopefully you're okay with digesting what some of those specs mean. Since we're talking about screens, let's move on to the hardware. Let's start with the screen technology. The Galaxy Note 2 has a 5.55 inch Super AMOLED HD display with a 1280 by 720 resolution measuring in at about 267 ppi. The Nexus 4 has a 4.7 inch display with a 1280 by 768 HD LCD IPS Plus display measuring in at about 320 ppi. Next we have the HTC Droid DNA which has a 5 inch and a whopping 1080 by 1920 resolution display which is a TFT LCD display. It tips the scales at a crazy 440 ppi. So what does this all actually mean? On the Droid DNA, things will look crisper when zoomed out, and the colour reproduction would be better than that of the Nexus 4, but we all know Super AMOLED screens have the most vibrant colour palette. Let's hear some more from Pocket Now. And by the way, something to note here, look at the Facebook icon here on the DNA uh, versus the Nexus 4. It's more blue, more saturated on the DNA as you can see there compared to the Nexus. And once again from The Verge. Uh, the only negative is that colours seem a little bit washed out on it. Uh, not just compared to a Super AMOLED, but even uh, compared to something like the display of the One X. Okay, so what about the dimensions and weights of all of these phones? Well, I'll put them all up on the screen because you can tell the relative sizes, so it's not that important for me to list them all out. But what you would be interested in is the thicknesses. So, the Note 2 comes in at 9.4mm, the Nexus 4 comes in at a very thin 9.1mm, and the HTC Droid DNA is the fattest of them all at 9.73mm. But it doesn't feel that way. Let's take a look why. Uh, it's not a phablet, uh, because it's not intended to take the place of a tablet like the Note 2 might, for example. It's very much a phone. It's a long bar phone. It's actually thicker than the Nexus 4, uh, but it feels thinner because of this nice sharp edge here. Those wondering about the Droid DNA size versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 size, let's have a look at them side by side. Android Authority reports. The first thing you'll notice is that while it still has a fairly large screen, the HTC Droid DNA is smaller than the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, with a 5-inch display to the Note 2's 5.5-inch display. Unfortunately, both the Droid DNA and Nexus 4 fall short of the Galaxy Note 2 when it comes to expandable memory or removable batteries. 16GB is the maximum, both for the Nexus 4 and the Droid DNA. It's unfortunate to see no removable batteries in either of these devices. One issue that may not work out so well for the HTC Droid DNA is its battery. 2,020 milliamp hours compared to the Samsung Galaxy Note 2's 3,100 milliamp hours? It'll be interesting to see how long the Droid DNA's battery keeps powering that 1080p display. So what about the weights? The Galaxy Note 2 is the heaviest at 183 grams, followed by the HTC Droid DNA at 142 grams, and then a very light Galaxy Nexus at 139 grams. What about the build quality? Well, there's a whole lot to say here. Uh, and it feels okay in the head. It doesn't feel as good as the Droid DNA. The edges should have been a higher quality material, maybe metal, for example. Whereas on the Droid DNA, you get glass, and the rest is just soft touch plastic, so it feels nice in the hand. It seems that HTC has made some weird design choices with the Droid DNA. On the top, the power button is interestingly placed in the top center, which is definitely annoying. They should have placed it on the side. And the thoughts on this from those trendy hipsters at The Verge? My biggest complaint with the DNA's design though is with its power button, which is located on the top of the phone directly in the middle. This means that you have to adopt a rather uncomfortable claw grip in order to turn the screen on and then reshuffle the device in your hand to unlock it. 
We know that Samsung's designs are never really that exciting. So, I'm both really pleased and I really like the back on this on the uh, on the Nexus so it catches a lot there. You can see that kind of digital effect moving around, whereas it's quite, uh, quite plain on the back of the Note 2. But the Galaxy Note 2 is very durable, unlike the Nexus 4. I accidentally knocked the review device that I was using off of my kitchen table onto the floor beneath it, and it did crack the back of the phone. There's a small hairline crack from the camera out to the edge of the device. Okay, so to summarize, if you want a durable phone that you have no problems replacing the back when you drop it or scratch it, the Galaxy Note 2 would be your best choice. If you want the nicest looking phone that is fairly durable and don't mind suffering for a weird power button placement and floppy peripheral covers, the Droid DNA is your choice, and if you want a nice looking phone but don't mind being extra careful with it, the Nexus 4 will be suitable for you. While we're on the topic of hardware, one other disappointing thing about the Nexus 4 is that there's no native USB support. Now most people might not care, but for me, that's what I thought was one of the cool and separating things of the Android operating system, and I actually do use it a lot. Curse Forever reports. And for those who are wondering, there is no USB OTG support. This means you cannot plug in a flash drive or connect a USB keyboard or mouse with the Nexus 4. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't all too much for you. We're just going to take a short break and then Cold Fusion TV will be back after this. Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the pilot episode. We'll have a discussion about the format afterwards. Okay, so let's move on to the software. The Nexus 4 provides a pure Android experience with Android Jelly Bean 4.2. We will also receive updates faster than the other two phones. There are certain software goodies exclusive to Android 4.2, such as a spherical Google Street View-esque camera and a revamped quick settings panel. There's also gesture typing which is similar to swipe. It must be noted though that these two features will come to the other two phones when they're eventually updated to Android 4.2. The pure Android experience is loved by so many, so the Nexus 4 is attractive in this department. However, one thing that is a drawback with the Nexus 4 is the software buttons. Whether you like them there or not, they're just going to be there. So you do end up losing precious real estate no matter what you're doing. On the flip side, the other two phones have been skinned with manufacturer layouts. On the one hand, we have HTC Sense on the Droid DNA, and on the other, we have TouchWiz on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. In my opinion, HTC Sense is better looking than TouchWiz, but that's no problem because you can get rid of TouchWiz and make the Galaxy Note 2 really shine. If you want to know more, just check out my previous videos. Going back to the Droid DNA, HTC has always been the best in contact integration, and the Droid DNA is obviously going to continue with this trend. There's also some cool syncing options included right off the bat. But there's stuff you're probably not going to use. Sense 4 Plus also allows you to manage multiple photo galleries across third-party apps, which is pretty cool. You can view the files stored on your phone as well as those from Microsoft SkyDrive, Dropbox, Facebook, Flickr, and Picasa. Similarly, we also saw this in Sense 4. What many people don't know about the Galaxy Note 2 is that TouchWiz extends way beyond the launcher. Within the operating system itself, TouchWiz has so many features, it just simply can't be touched by the other two. There's a huge number of motion controls, S Pen features, and multitasking built right in. It makes the other two phones look like, well, just phones. And the Galaxy Note 2 becomes somewhat of a beast, a freak of technology. There's just way too much to go over in this video, but I'll put a link below so you can check out some more. All three phones are stellar when it comes to software, but the Note 2 is a clear winner here. So we've come to the final part of this video, value. This was very hard to weigh up. The Nexus 4 keeps pace with the other two phones very well, but the Note 2 just has so many features that even CNET thought it was just too much of a good thing. It's kind of a mixed bag because although you get the benefits of the Google Now services and Jelly Bean's awesome voice search and commands and Swift Key Flow keyboard for tracing characters on a keyboard, it's straightforward and easy, but it also becomes more complicated when you throw in the dual screen mode to run two apps at the same time, and then on top of that, throw in specific features for the S Pen, like AirView, for hovering over items to preview them. But CNET kind of likes the iPhone, so go figure. Meanwhile, we have the DNA, which is the most powerful of the three, and has the best screen, and is the best looking, but does that alone just justify its cost? It really depends on you. It depends what you want. If you want a really high-end smartphone, but want to keep the cost down, the Nexus 4 is for you. If you just want features galore and literally do everything on your smartphone, then the Galaxy Note 2 is a no-brainer value-wise. The DNA itself is hard to justify against the other two phones, 
If it was the DNA against any other smartphone, save for the Note 2 and the Nexus 4, then yes, you'll be getting more bang for your buck, but not against these two. However, if you do use your phone for multimedia, such as video and audio, then the Beats audio integration and 1080p screen will increase the value for you for the DNA. So, which one of these three phones is the best? Really, that's actually an invalid question. It depends on your personal preferences. But for me, it has to go to the Galaxy Note 2. I use that S Pen almost every day, and the multitasking feature has saved my ass so many times. There's just not another phone out there, just yet, that comes close to the amount of features packed into the Galaxy Note 2. I'm definitely not saying the other two phones are bad phones, in fact they're even faster than the Note 2 when it comes to GPU intensive tasks, but sometimes if you want more value, you want more features. If you have a friend that's deciding what smartphone to get, share this video with them, I'm sure it would help them out a lot. The same goes for if you see a post on YouTube and someone saying, I can't decide between phone X and phone Y. There's a whole bunch of links below in the description of all the reviews that have been cited. So technically, this should be a one-stop shop for all your 2012 high-end smartphone needs. So in the bigger picture of things, will HTC ever come back to its former glory with the droid DNA as its primary weapon? Will this be the start of the rise of LG? Can Samsung hold on to its smartphone lead? Only time will tell. This has been Cold Fuston, and as always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, so that's the end of the episode. So uh, please tell me what you thought in the comment section below. I just want some feedback, and uh, if you didn't like anything or you did like anything, just uh, let me know. You know, if you needed more cowbell or something, I don't know. So if this is successful, so over 100,000 views or so, I keep doing this kind of thing. Otherwise, I'll change formats and see what else goes on. So cheerio!